Hello. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, everyone. How you doing? How's everyone doing today? I hope you're all doing well. That was funny that I was on the camera. I'm like, hello. Uh, how's it going? I hope you're doing well, and I welcome you guys to a lovely Friday of streaming here. What's up, what's up, everyone? Today, incidentally, is Friday the 4th of June, 2021. I am Darkside Phil, also known as DSP for short, and I am here live for a full and fun day of gameplay streams. I'm very excited for today in particular, because today we get to return... To Fallout New Vegas, a game that I started playing in a marathon setting on Tuesday, and you guys absolutely loved it, uh, and I loved it too. I was pleasantly surprised playing Fallout New Vegas on Tuesday at how much fun the game was playing it again. Um, I've, I've done two playthroughs of this game so far for the internet. The first was when the game was a new release, way back when in 2010, and then the next playthrough was in 2015, which I did as a build-up to the release of Fallout 4. So, it's actually been six years since I played the game, and quite frankly, I remember some of it, but not all of it. I definitely know some things I've already run into, I'm like, oh, I don't remember this, and I, I already remember doing some things now that I'm not so sure I ever did. Like, this time I went to the prison and allied with the Powder Gangers, which then allowed me to recruit a former sheriff to become the new sheriff of Prim. I think previously I had always had the robot become the sheriff of Prim. So actually having this guy become the new sheriff is kind of interesting. From what I'm to understand now, if you go back to Prim later on in the game, there'll actually be a continuation of that quest line with this guy being the sheriff. So I'm pretty interested in that to see how that pans out. Also doing this explosives build, which honestly the build is not complete yet. Um... Being that I don't have all the perks that I feel I need to make it good, uh, I definitely need to get uh, that perk that's going to reduce uh, explosive damage to me. So that way I don't have to worry so much about being blown up by myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but so far it's been fun. And, you know, we're progressing on after it was about seven hours, just under seven hours of gameplay. I think it clocked in at like six hours and 45 minutes of gameplay back on Tuesday. The overwhelming amount of feedback that I received was, this playthrough is great, we're excited for you to continue it. So here we are today, we're picking up where we left off, we're currently inside of the, uh, I forgot the name of the company, it's that rocket company, and we're trying to clear out the ghouls, and we're working with Boone. Boone is our first companion in the game, and he's just as good as I remember, in fact, he seems to be better. He's swapping out weapons, which I don't remember. I remember him always using a sniper rifle, but now he's swapping out weapons like a plasma rifle and shit, and he is just vaporizing everything around me. And I'm like, damn, this is pretty fun. <laughs> so today will be at least three more hours of Fallout New Vegas gameplay here on the stream. And yes, Fallout New Vegas is going to be a regular game here on my streams. It is part of the, the lineup of main games that I'm playing in the foreseeable future. All right, so I'm very excited for this, and I hope you guys uh, are also excited for the continuation of Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> All righty then. Okay, um, later tonight, my late night stream is Street Fighter, my weekly throwback Street Fighter session where we play two hours of old school Street Fighter fun. Looking forward to that as well. Something I absolutely enjoy doing every Friday night, and you guys seem to as well because people always show up and hang out. When I play it. So I'm, I'm cool. I'm very excited for that as well. 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, before we even get into the rest of the schedule for the rest of the week, I'm just going to say something up front today. All right? You guys have been absolutely supportive and outstanding ever since Twitch basically kicked me out of the partner program back in late April. All right? They still, to this day, have not provided any evidence or justification for me being kicked out of that program. They just accuse me of doing something that they have no evidence of me doing. So that's why I'm not there anymore. All right. But you guys have really stepped up. You guys over the last month and a half supported me in droves, when, especially when it came to the fact that tips really are all that's keeping me afloat on these streams. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that. I want you to understand how grateful I am. This could have been the end of everything. This seriously could have been like disaster for me. 
And uh, it wasn't because you guys stepped up and supported me so much in the last month and a half. The good news is, all right, there is a light at the end of the annoying tunnel that we're stuck in because I'm going to begin to be getting paid by YouTube for my performance as a streamer on YouTube late this month. It's At the earliest, it'll probably be around June 21st, but it's probably going to be more like June 23rd. Usually they pay me around the 23rd, 24th of the month, okay? This means that everything that you guys did on this channel in May, including all the channel memberships and the super chats and the super stickers, plus ad revenue for the channel over May, which I always get anyway, all of that will be paid to me at the end of the month, essentially, okay? That's good news. And once that happens, and once that ends up now being consistent, we're going to basically be back to where we were when I was on Twitch, where it's not about, oh, tips, tips, tips constantly and worrying about tips. Instead, it's just having good streams. You know, if we hit tips goals, great. We won't have to worry about doing it every stream. Uh, I'm sure people will be joining, you know, membership, super chats, and it'll all be, you know, kind of equal. I even said this uh, last night on the Call of Duty stream. I said, two major changes are coming later this month. First of all, again, once I start getting paid by YouTube, I will make it so that Super Chats actually get recognized in a, in a, uh, a special way. You know how I have Last Tip? Well, I'm going to get rid of that. Instead of having Last Tip, it's going to be Last Super Chat. Okay? Um, and I'm just going to put the name of the last person who did a Super Chat up there, unless it's something insulting or stupid. Um... So that way, there'll be more incentive to Super Chat because you'll actually get name recognition here on the leaderboard during the course of the stream, okay? In addition, I will also not be seeking $200 every stream, <laughs> which I know is ridiculous, but that's the equivalent between what I used to make on Twitch in their partner program plus tips. That's about what I used to make every stream, right? That's what, I was, that's what was keeping me afloat, paying my bills, and then all of a sudden that was taken away from me in late April, all right? So, that being said, hopefully, everything goes well this month, and hopefully I get paid, like I'm supposed to get paid by YouTube later this month, and everything's good. And then we can get back to how it was, basically, before all this happened in late April, and we can just get back to the streets. Because I told you guys earlier this year, I said, this year, for me, is one of the best years ever. This is a year of financial rebuilding for me, because I was at a pace where if I kept going the rate I was going, I was going to be able to not only meet all my financial responsibilities, but basically for the first time ever in many years, I would not be behind on my taxes, and it would allow me to not have constant back tax payments, constant money that I owe to everyone, and I was going to get back on my feet financially for the first time in years, and then Twitch kicks me out of the partner program with zero fucking justification. So it basically, as soon as I say, oh, I'm doing good, I get screwed over, and now I'm not doing good anymore, you see? So, why am I bringing this up? Because I want you guys to understand how much how grateful I am for the last month and a half of support, but also that it's it's going to get better. Some people are under the impression, oh man, see, every stream now feels, you know, got this giant tips goal, and if he doesn't reach it, it's, it's sad, and this sucks, and blah, blah, blah. It's not going to be like this forever. It's not. We just got to get through the next three weeks, essentially. If I can get through three more weeks... All right, then we'll be okay. But I have to get through those three weeks. And the reason that this is important is this week in particular, I got a lot of bills coming up. I just paid my car payment this morning. All right, with the tips that you guys have provided me over the last week. I need to pay two condo payments, meaning two dues payments, and pay my electricity. Excuse me, I keep saying electricity, it's the internet bill. The internet in the next week. All that's due in the next week. Then. I need to raise enough to pay my mortgage by the 15th. So it's going to be daunting. I'm not going to lie. Last month, I had a marathon, the launch of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. That helped me tremendously. I I'm not planning on doing any kind of a special marathon to help with this, all right? But the reason I'm bringing it up is the last two days, the support on the streams has been incredibly slow. Last night, I raised $30 on the Call of Duty stream. That was it. All right, I have not hit a tips goal now in four in uh, four streams. That's not good. That's a bad sign at a time when I just need to get through three weeks, and then it's not a concern anymore. You know, and again, people being very stupid. Oh, look at what he's asking for every stream. This is what I was making when between the support I was getting on Twitch from subscriptions, from cheers, combined with the tips. This is what I was making. This is what was uh, I was able to afford everything with. 
All right? You got to understand that. I'm not asking for anything more than what I was making. This is exactly what I was making, and this is what I needed to make ends meet. All right? So people being stupid and trying to over-exaggerate and say that I'm being greedy or whatever, I, I just need this to get to get to the point where we were. Uh, we're, we're getting closer. Three weeks. Okay? So, all this being said, please, if you like the streams, please support them. Please tip me. Yes, you can always become a channel member, and that's great. We have a, a member's goal for this month. If we get 250 memberships, I'll be doing a special event, whether it's going to be the Return of the Indies event, the Return of the rage or maybe a retrospective event. People seem to be leaning towards more to a retrospective event at this point. Okay? Um, we'll see, though. Again, I'm going to take in all of your feedback over the course of the next few weeks. Okay? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right? But, um... You can also super chat, and that's great. Super chat supports the channel. But if you do become a member of Super Chat right now, those will help me long term, meaning in July. <laughs> I'll see some benefit from those. But for now, please, if you like the content and you want to help me out in the next three weeks to get through this time and get to the point where we're back to where we were in April, please tip me. All right. I it would be great if we could hit every single tips goal. I, I realistically, do I think that's gonna happen? Of course I don't think that's gonna happen. All right? It's okay to fluctuate. It's okay to have one really great stream and then have a slow stream. But I've had four slow streams in a row. And I'm looking at my bills. I'm like, dude, not only do I have to clear three big bills, then the mortgage is coming up in a little over a week. Like, what am I going to do? So, yeah, it's starting to scare me. Okay? So, please support the streams if you like in particular. All right? This is a stream where New Vegas, you guys loved New Vegas back on Tuesday. You supported the New Vegas stream back on Tuesday in a big way. If you could support the New Vegas stream today, I'd appreciate it. The Weekly Street Fighter stream, you guys always come out to support that. Please support that tonight, okay? <clears throat> Let's get through the next few weeks and then get back to where we were. Being happy, not worrying about this shit constantly. I hate this. I was doing so well. And then all of a sudden, this stupid Twitch thing fucks me over. And you know what? I already said my piece publicly about it, but I'm going to say it again because I have the right to. Twitch fucked me over with absolutely no justification. They have not proven anything. They have not provided any evidence of any investigation. In my eyes, they're lying. In my eyes, Twitch didn't want to put up with the online harassment that comes towards my way with the trolls false reporting me constantly. And they made up a fucking excuse to kick me out of the partner program so they didn't have to look into the false accusations anymore. That's the most pussy fucking move you could possibly make. It screwed me over. It screwed over my business. It screwed over the well-being of my family. And I don't, not only do I not appreciate that, I find that incredibly fucking insulting. And I'm very upset with the way that they unprofessionally handled the entire situation. And I basically am of the impression that they are just a business that does not give two fucks about anything but their own personal profits. And that pisses me the fuck off. And I'm very upset about it. We would not be in this position right now if it wasn't for Twitch being unprofessional. So... That's that's really the problem here. There's always going to be trolling. There's always going to be online harassment. But who cow toes to it? Who's the one who bends over, right, for it? Twitch did. Twitch fucked me for no reason. Something I didn't do. So that's why we are we are where we are, and I, I am upset about it. Rightly, you know, I'm happy now that I'm on YouTube and I can do what I love. Don't have to worry about every five seconds someone saying I did something I didn't do, suspending my channel for shit I didn't do, kicking me out of programs for shit I didn't fucking do. Enough is enough. All right? Enough of their shit. So, thank you to those who in the last month and a half did support me and understand the situation, how shitty it is. I don't like this at all. I don't want to be in a situation where we have to constantly be talking about this shit. It frustrates the fuck out of me. I just want to play games and have fun. I hope you guys understand that. All right? <clears throat> All right, so that being said, I mentioned it, we talked about it, we can now fucking move on because I don't want to talk about it anymore on this stream, okay? All right, well, let's now move on to the schedule for the next week, okay? So tomorrow, Saturday, June 5th, is my last streaming day of the week. That's going to be Mass Effect Legendary Edition concluding, and then we're immediately going to start up with Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition, okay? And man... What a difference those two games are. They are just in contrast. You're going to see back to back those games, how different those games are being played back to back. It's like night and day. They don't even look like the same game or the same franchise. Seriously. 
Um, so pretty pretty uh, interesting how how that'll turn out. And I only played Mass Effect three once. I don't really remember much about it. As my wife has been playing the game over the last week, I've been watching her every once in a while. I jump in and watch her play for for a little bit. And I'm like, wow, I actually don't remember any of this game. I don't know what I was doing when that game was out. I don't remember shit. <laughs> So it should be a good time playing this game over the next couple of weeks, okay? Uh, all right, so that's the mainstream tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, it's the return of Danganronpa V3, my weekly Danganronpa session, where we advance with this murder mystery plot. Uh, at this point, things are heating up with the mystery, trying to understand everything that's going on around here. We're in Chapter 4, and I get the feeling we are getting close to the next murder. I'm getting that vibe, okay? Okay. Um... Yeah, that's right. Das Bullshit just said, yeah, ME3 is the best gameplay field with the worst story. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much exactly right. It's like they culminated all the gameplay style of the franchise. They actually made it feel like a full cover-based shooter, like almost like Gears of War, but then the story's dog shit. <laughs> it's just like so disappointing, especially if you're someone who invested all this time into making these painstaking choices over the course of the franchise just to see how it pans out in the last game. You're like, well, shit. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see that starting tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so Sunday, guys, is my day off from streaming. I will not be here on Sunday of this weekend. Uh, that'll be my day to go grocery shopping and run errands and the like. I shall return on Monday with some more Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown. I played this yesterday for the very first time ever. I went into it knowing none of the systems of the game. Zero. Okay. After playing it for about three hours, I actually like the game, but... I know I suck at it, and I know that it's going to take a lot of time investment to get good at it because this is a franchise I've never played before, and there are some definitely some intricacies to this game engine that I'm not understanding. In particular, the whole how to counter throws properly, how to block and sidestep properly. I was trying to sidestep, but every time I got sidestepped, like I hit in the face. So it was a little frustrating in that regard. I'm not. I know there's stuff I'm not getting, uh, and also I was playing a character Jeffrey where he was kind of slow. And I'm wondering if I pick a faster character, if it'll actually change the way the game feels. So, more of that on Monday. I'll be picking a different character, trying them out in their tutorial mode, and then going online with them and seeing what I can do. Okay? So that's going to be Monday. Alright? Um, Monday night, it's new Pokemon Snap returning to the late stream. We're actually near the end of the game from what I'm going to understand. Maybe another couple quicker streams, and I'll actually beat it. So... We'll see what happens Monday night. Two more hours of chill new Pokemon Snap content. On Tuesday, the 8th of June, it'll be Fallout New Vegas again. So the next stream of Fallout New Vegas after today will be Tuesday. Tuesday night is the return of MLB The Show late night chill stream. Now here's the thing. Some people seem to really be enjoying the playthrough of MLB. And they're actually sad that I have not been playing it for the last couple of weeks they've really enjoyed the late night chill sessions on the other hand there's some people who've been telling me they don't really like the late night chill sessions all right so in my opinion it's kind of like hit or miss you know sometimes it's great sometimes it's not i like interacting with you guys and having conversation okay so i'd like to bring it back for this week let's do one late night stream of it let's see how it goes if you guys like it and it's a chill session that everyone enjoys, then maybe I'll keep it in the rotation. But if I do it and people are like, nah, this is boring, all right, kill this game, then that's fine. We have many, many things to do. I don't have to keep MLB in the rotation. It's also not a narrative-based game where there's a definitive ending or anything. So no skin off my back if I just say, okay, that's enough for that game, okay? So let's see what happens on Tuesday. On Wednesday... Mass Effect 3 will continue as the main gameplay stream, and then Divinity Original Sin 2 will return as the late stream. Yes, that is correct. Divinity is returning. Now, <clears throat> that's as far as I've gotten with the schedule. Now, let's talk, because, ladies and gentlemen, we've got all of these good game events coming up. And they're very interesting, obviously, because it's going to be covering all new games for the rest of the year, whether it's Summer Games Fest or E3 or both, or these different digital conferences... It's going to be hard to cover them all. It is. It's going to be hard to cover them all. In fact, I'm already looking at it and saying, okay, maybe I need to pick and choose 
what day I cover and what day I have off and stuff. So Thursday, June 10th is Summer Games Fest. It starts at 11 a.m. Pacific time, but it is not like a digital conference like E3. From what I'm to understand, Summer Games Fest is going to be an all-day event where over the course of the day, it's an ongoing broadcast, and there's going to be tons of announcements and things during this broadcast, but it's, it's all day. It's not like it's, oh, it's, it's a one-hour presentation. No, it's supposed to be like an all-day thing. So I'm not going to sit there all day not streaming games to watch this thing. Instead, I'm going to stream on that day. That's the 10th. So what will I stream? I don't know. Maybe more Virtual Fighter. Maybe more Fallout. You know, we'll see. The night stream. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Call of Duty that night. Okay? But essentially, <clears throat> I'll be streaming. And then what I'll do is I'll try to get caught up on all the game news between the streams. So if we want to talk about them on those streams, we can. But it's not like, it's not like an E3 style event where there's going to be definitive press conferences. There's going to be announcements over the course of this Summer Games Fest, okay? One of the things that's heavily rumored to happen at Summer Games Fest is we're going to get Elden Ring information. Don't know if it's true or not, but apparently that's the rumor. The other thing is it was announced that Jeff Goldblum, the actor, is actually going to make an appearance at Summer Games Fest, and everyone's like, well, obviously Jeff Goldblum has been one of the major people involved with Jurassic World, so maybe they're going to make a full-fledged next-gen Jurassic World game and Jeff Goldblum's here to kind of talk about it and, and present it. That's what people are kind of guessing at this point. All right? Me, I would like a Jurassic World game as long as it's done well. As long as it's not some gimmicky shit and actually is done like a full-fledged game, maybe open world. Maybe it could be work. It could be pretty good. Okay? So we'll see. But I'm excited for that, obviously. We're going to get news... About that, starting on the 10th, but I think the 10th will just be a normal streaming day for me, okay? Then on the 11th, which would be Friday, a week from today, it's actually the premiere of Ratchet & Clank, A Rift Apart. The new next-gen game on PS5. Why am I really excited about this? Number one, because Ratchet & Clank's a great franchise. Number two, because everything we've seen from this game up to this point has looked amazing. And number three, I get to play it at full quality. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time since owning my PlayStation 5, I will be able to play a next-gen title at the quality that I'm actually playing it on my TV on the stream as well. You guys will see the full quality 1080p 60 frames per second that I'm seeing while I play the goddamn game. Finally, you have no idea how much I had to hold my tongue when I was playing games like Astro's Playroom, Demon's Souls, Call of Duty, and I'm seeing all these great graphics, and I have to basically broadcast at 720 for fucking stupid-ass Twitch. It pissed me off so bad, and I didn't say shit because I knew I needed Twitch for my livelihood. That was where I need, you know, that's my job. I'm not going to talk shit about it, but now that I'm on YouTube, I can say, Twitch, you fucking suck in that regard. The fact that you limit your people who broadcast on your site to such a low bitrate that no one can really do full quality for these next-gen consoles. That's the biggest fucking oversight I've seen from a major business. How can we have a new generation of consoles launch and they don't upgrade their business to support it? That is ridiculous. Okay? So I am very happy that, yes, I'll be playing a brand new release for PS5 exclusive, and it'll be full quality for you guys. Thank God. Alright? I'm very excited for this coming up. Alright. Now, there is stuff on that Friday, but it's nothing of any significance. Listen to this. Netflix Geeked Weekend or something, and then IGN Expo. No one cares about that shit. So I'm just going to play uh, Ratchet and Clank all day that day. Okay? Now, on Saturday, June 12th, there is a conference that I'm interested in. It's Ubisoft Forward. It's at noon. All right? However, however, every year when I watch the Ubisoft press conference, I'm vastly disappointed. Half the conference is usually a waste of everyone's fucking time. I've decided that this year, I'm not watching that. I will watch it later. I'm, that's going to be, on the 12th, that's going to be a normal streaming day for me. Okay? I'm just going to watch that Ubisoft forward later. There's going to be other stuff. Gorilla Collective, Wholesome Direct. 
apparently Gearbox and Devolver Digital are also supposed to be doing things that day. But I am not going to watch that conference. Instead, we're just going to do full gameplay streaming. Likely, it'll be another day of Ratchet and Clank with a, something you know tied into the night stream that night. Um, but yeah, I'm not wasting time on that shit. I'm just not. All right, I'll, I'll I'll watch it later and I'll cover it and I'll talk about it on my streams. But I'm not I'm not gonna be, deal with that fucking conference at this point. Okay, now the real first day of coverage for me is gonna be Sunday, June thirteenth. That's one week from this coming Sunday. I will be covering the Xbox and Bethesda joint press conference that happens at ten a.m. Pacific time. What we will do is I'll be here at ten a.m. We will watch that conference together, all right? I, everyone will watch it, and I'll, I'll have a chat open so that we can actually uh, talk during that event going on. We can discuss the event, the, the happenings of that press conference as we all watch it on the internet together. Then I will immediately go live once it ends and do a recap reaction stream. Now, I'm assuming it's going to be about an hour to an hour and a half long. I'm only going to have about a half an hour to 45 minutes to do my recap reactions because then... At 12.15 p.m. Pacific Time, Square Enix is doing their their show. All right? So I have to basically hurry, get a stream going, do it quick, take the stream down, get another stream chat up so we can watch the Square Enix show together. Okay? And then after that, once that show ends, again, I'm going to go live and I'm going to do a recap and reactions stream. Now... There's also a PC gaming show that day. I'll let, let you guys know it's completely worthless. There'll be nothing there of any interest. They do it every year and it sucks. Future game show. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I don't care about it. But apparently Warner Brothers is also supposed to be doing some kind of stream that day. But they don't have any date or excuse me, any time frame set yet. Nor have they said a word about what they're actually presenting. Well, as we know from last year, likely they'll be talking about an update on all their Batman games. Because aren't they making two different Batman games? Plus, obviously, probably the state of games like Injustice, Mortal Kombat. Keep in mind, there has been a giant shakeup at Warner Brothers. All right? There was a big sell-off and everything. So, we don't even know the status of many of these games because of the shakeup internally at Warner Brothers. It'll be interesting to see if we get any kind of an update on these games at this event for that day. But basically, I'm covering, on Ju Sunday, June 13th, I'll be covering Xbox, Bethesda, and Square Enix. And then the rest of the day, I'll just be doing regular gameplay streaming. Okay, Monday, June 14th, that's going to be my day off. I've decided that will be my next day off. So Sunday, this Sunday is my, my day off. And then Monday, June 14th will be my next day off. All right. Now on that day, Take-Two Interactive, who's the owners of Rockstar, as well as many other franchises, as well as Capcom, are supposed to be doing digital events. I'm not going to be here that day. So those I will watch myself. And I will eventually talk about them on my streams, okay? Now, for the rest of the week, yes, on Tuesday, there's supposed to be a Nintendo Direct at 9 a.m. Supposedly, Bandai Namco is supposed to have some kind of an event, okay? So, what I'm going to do is thus. It looks like just that one day, honestly, is the day when I'm going to be covering all that stuff. It looks like that one day, Sunday the 13th, I'll be covering press conferences. Unless Sony decides to do one, which has not been announced... Uh, I don't think that there's much else going on outside of, you know, Microsoft, Bethesda, and Square Enix. I don't think I need to directly cover any of the other conferences, all right? But what I will do is something a little different. At the end of that week, all right, likely on that Friday, okay, I am going to do a special stream. That stream is going to be called The Best and Worst of E3 and Summer Games Fest. And the whole point of that stream is for me to go down the list of things that were discussed during the course of the week during E3 and Summer Games Fest, and I'm going to tell you what I liked and what I didn't like and summarize all of it in one place. So that way, even if you didn't have an opportunity to watch all the digital events and we didn't get to talk about them all on my streams over the course of the week, there will be one special stream slash podcast slash event where I will cover all of it, all right? So a little different this year. Especially because they're, you know, these times are all weird and some, some of these events don't even have times yet. Rather than sit here and say, oh, my life's going to be dictated by when these digital presentations are out. I'm going to do mostly normal gameplay streaming. Keep in mind, once Ratchet and Clank comes out, everyone's going to want to see that constantly. I'm going to want to continue on with Fallout New Vegas. I'm not going to want 
to have my whole schedule interrupted by nonsense because these guys are doing crazy digital shit left and right. So instead, it's mostly just going to be normal streams for me, and then the end of that week, I'll come back and say, here's a nice summary podcast to put all my thoughts in one place, okay? And that's how we're going to handle it. Now, later on this month, there will be more new releases, okay? Um, There's going to be Mario Golf that I'm going to play, and likely... During this whole Summer Games Flash slash E3 event, there's going to be many other games that are going to be announced. All right? This always happens during these events that all of a sudden, the, a bunch of game dates are announced, and sometimes games just come out out of nowhere. I would expect maybe one to two indie games actually to pop up out of nowhere and just be released during these time frames. All right? So, my schedule for the month could dramatically change by the end of the month, gameplay-wise. We have to see what happens during these events. Okay? But, if everything goes according to plan... It'll be Mass Effect 3, Virtual Fighter 5, and Fallout New Vegas on the main gameplay streams, and then Ratchet and Clank starting next Friday. Okay? Then, a special event, like I said, to summarize all those, and then Mario Golf by the end of the month, and then anything else that happens. All right? The night streams, again, are likely going to be Dong and Rampo, a weekly throwback Street Fighter session, some Call of Duty, and then, depending on how these chill sessions go, new Pokemon Snap, which maybe we'll finish sooner rather than later. Maybe I'll choose to continue with MLB, or maybe we'll retire it, and Divinity 2 coming back. So that's kind of the plans for the rest of the month. I hope that sounds good to everyone. It's a good variety of stuff to cover, and uh, <clears throat> that's how we're going to handle it. All right? Fair enough? All right. I already talked about tipping. I already talked about memberships. I really don't want to go talk about any of that shit any longer. Um, I'm just excited to see what comes out of the next couple of weeks because there's so many rumors right now swirling. Oh, will we get a new Silent Hill? Will we finally get info on Elden Ring? Is there a new Nintendo Switch Pro right around the corner? Is there this? Is there that? Is that? It's like, oh my God. It's like overload of rumors with no substantiation. So let's just chill. Let's chill and sit back and relax and see how it all pans out as gamers, right? Good stuff. Okay, ladies and gents, shout outs time. We start off today with a shout out to Rob on Wheels who tipped me $10 and says, Viva New Vegas. Very nice. Yes, Viva New Vegas indeed. Like I said, I had so much fun playing this game uh, the other day. I cannot wait for more today. In three hours, will we get to Vegas? We might. Or, you know, some people have actually suggested I do some of the DLCs before I even go to the strip. I don't know about that. Um, I don't know. I actually don't remember what's between me and Vegas right now. I don't remember what we have in store. Because it's been six years since I played the game. So, we'll find out, I guess, right? Wolf's Paradox. To me, $3.45. This is, what's up, Phil? How's your day been? It's been good so far. Oh, uh, so... <laughs> Jasper has decided. He's, he's, you know, he's been talking with us. He's decided he wants to be a hairdresser. This morning... I'm sleeping in bed, and I start having this feeling, and the next thing I know, Jasper has completely saturated my head. He's licking my hair and positioning it into a goofy hairstyle. So he's practicing. He wants to be a hairdresser, he told me. So I'm going to support his decision. <laughs> Lou has done a super chat. He says, what in the goddamn? What's up, Lou? Thank you for the super chat this morning. So anyway, thank you to Wolf's Paradox. He says, do you think you would ever do vlog-style content on big trips again? I greatly enjoyed Universal Vlogs way back when. Well, first of all, Wolf's Paradox, there's so many factors involved in what you're saying. All right, the first factor would be that the world has to get back to normal. And at least, you know, from what we're seeing, it does look like in the near future, perhaps the world is going to start getting back to normal and recovering from this whole COVID thing. All right? So at least in that regard... Yes, perhaps things will start to get back to normal sooner rather than later, and things will start to reopen, all right? By the way, shout out to Super Blimp, who tipped a dollar. Thank you, Super Blimp, for the super chat. Um, the other factor here is, of course, me getting back to a position where I was getting better financially. If, as I said earlier this year, things were going well, and if things continued to go well in the way they were going, and I was paying everything that I owed, and I wasn't having accruing more debt, more debt, and issues and problems, uh, then yeah, Maybe within the next couple of years, it looked like I would have been able to do something like that, like a trip. But sadly, now, I just got set back almost two months, <laughs> you know. So, let's see what happens. 
hopefully things here on YouTube settle. People will start to support via, you know, memberships and super chats and everything gets settled in normally just like it had been on Twitch. And then I can say, okay, I'm back to how I was and now things will be good. But we got to get there. All right. Let's see what happens. Now, in regards to just the, the question about would I vlog everything on a trip and post it up on YouTube? No. Would I vlog certain things of a trip and share them with you gradually over time? Yes. But would I vlog every little piece of a trip and put up, you know, all, a million vlogs on YouTube of the whole trip? No. I'm sorry, but those days are over. Why? As I've told you guys many times, sadly, these people use things against me in a very negative way. All right? I wouldn't put it past people to try to use vlogs to figure out specifically where I'm staying on a trip. Try to find a way to fuck with us if we were on a trip. Um, and or try to do something to make our life miserable while on a trip. I'm not kidding. I, I guarantee you. So likely what we would do is if we ever were to go on a trip, we would never we would never announce where we were going ahead of time. We would not give details of anything um, at all. And, you know, if we were to do some surprise vlogging, it would likely be once we're not where we are in said video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's say, for example, we went to Vancouver. All right, let's say that we decided we were going to take a train up to Vancouver. Once COVID settles down and everything's fine, you can do this again. And we do some vlogging around Vancouver for a day or two. Then, maybe once the trip's almost over, then I would upload the videos because that way people can't fucking follow us all over Vancouver trying to fuck with us. And then I would, we would come home and be safe. And I know you say, oh, I'm not paranoid or whatever. No. That's being safe because these people are fucked up. You have to understand that the actions these people have taken are, have gone well beyond the realm of just silly trolling. You know? Calling into a bankruptcy hearing, impersonating one of my creditors to try to get personal information about me is not trolling. That is a crime. All right? The things these people have done behind the scenes, which I would not even mention, to try to fuck with me and my livelihood, the impersonation, the identity theft, the things they have done, is beyond trolling. They are concretely trying to hurt me and my family because they are mentally ill people. So I am not going to take any fucking chances or anything like that. If ever there was a time where I was going on a trip, you would never know where I was going. You would not know where I was going to be. I'm not taking any chances, man. I'm just not. Okay? So, would I vlog? Possibly, yes. Maybe a few vlogs. Oh, look, here's a dinner we ate. We're at a, a, a restaurant. Here we are. Oh, look, here's an attraction somewhere. Or here's something we saw that's really nice and we vlogged it. Yeah, every once in a while I would do something like that. But I would post it up much later. That way it would, uh, <clears throat> you know, not have any issues with assholes. Okay? Fair enough? All right. Cemetery accident took me a dollar thirty and says Jeff Goldblum's name is Jeff. That is absolutely correct. I don't know how you figured that one out, but thank you for the tip, Sanitary Accident. Uh, Eternal Napalm tipped me a dollar thirty and says the following. Actually, this will get us up to fifteen. He says, I'm absolutely loving Returnal. It's the best third person combat and boss design I've played in years. Definitely my game of the year so far. I appreciate your honest take on the game. That's one reason why you're my favorite content creator. You give honest views. I actually just said something on the pre-stream about Returnal because people were shitting all over it and saying that it's like the worst game ever. No, 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 no. Returnal, here's my take. Returnal is a great six to eight hour game. If Returnal were only six to eight hours long and you were only playing through those six biomes and you were fighting you know, unique boss fights and all of that, it would actually be an outstanding game for me. But for me, having six to eight hours of content dragged out to 30 hours because of the repetitive roguelike nature of the game... That's where the game has major negatives for me. Now, some people will completely disagree with that. But I felt the graphics, the gunplay, uh, the boss fights, the variety of enemies, and the stage design actually was quite good. My issue was having to fucking redo it a million times. I didn't feel that was worth my time. And that's why I feel about the game how I do. But someone else might absolutely love it and say it's the best game they've ever played. You know? So, I understand that. And I understand people have different things they like and dislike. And that's okay. I'm not going to hate on someone because they say they absolutely think Returnal is the best game in many years. But I'm also not going to 
you know, allow myself to lose my, my own opinion on it and be swayed, I'm sorry. For me, a game like that that uses that much time up for repetition just isn't worth my time, you see? I'm just being honest. So, uh, for you, I'm glad you loved it, Eternal. And I respect your opinion. I'm happy that you respect mine as well. I'm there are times when you respect people, you can agree to disagree on stuff. That's the cool thing about being mature. The world's not black and white, and it's not, oh, it's my way or the highway, you know? Um, the underside of the bowl tipped a dollar and says, Twitch announced animated emotes, free follower emotes, and viewers from aside from subs. Do you think these features will help grow communities better? I don't know. Maybe. I, I am, I'll be honest with you. You know, I don't really care about what Twitch is doing anymore. I'm disappointed that YouTube doesn't support animated emotes. Well, the weirdest thing about this, all right, they have the ability to upload them. And when you upload the animated emote, it plays the animation on your page that shows what emotes you have on your channel. But then, when you actually use the emote, guess what? It's not animated. So it's not that YouTube doesn't have the support or capacity for it. For some reason, they just haven't implemented the, the motion of the emote yet in stream chat. Like, I uploaded this emote. It's the cowboy emote where it's me in the cowboy hat. And they pull out two guns. And it's firing two guns. And it looks really cool. And it moves and everything on my fucking emotes page. So I was like, oh, this is great. People will get all these motion emotes right off the bat. And then people use it. And it's just me in the cowboy hat. And it doesn't move. Like, why? <laughs> why doesn't it just work? I, I don't know. What I would say is thus. YouTube, when it comes to live streaming, have always been lagging behind. Okay? It's always been lagging behind. We know this. YouTube was created to be an on-demand video site. They decided much later on that they wanted to implement the live streaming features. So they're always behind the eight ball. However, they have been playing catch-up. And again, some of the rumors of things that will improve this year... Supposedly by the end of the year, you'll be able to gift the membership to another person. And supposedly by the end of the year, there'll be the ability to turn on a subs-only mode. Which means that people will basically, if, they're, if you're subscribed to my channel, DSP Gaming, then you'll be able to chat. But if you have not been subscribed to DSP Gaming, then you can't. This That's identical to the followers-only mode that they have over on Twitch. And quite frankly, we used to use that mode all the time to stop trolling. So if they could implement some of these things that Twitch already has, that would be a huge step towards improvement. Okay? Now, new animated emotes and everything over on Twitch, good for them. I hope that YouTube will eventually implement something like that. I just want I just want animated emotes to begin with. I don't know why, why they don't have any. They have zero here. I would like to at least see some animated emotes of some capacity. So, Okay. All right, Lewis has to me $10, says, Phil, what is your stance on Atlas games? I know you're not able to finish the playthrough of Persona 5 a while back. Actually, I was, but I, I guess we'll clarify that in a moment. Seeing as how the Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne HD recently came out, I'm wondering if you're looking to ever play it. Um, here's the situation with Atlas, at least the last time that I was made aware of it. Atlas US and Atlas Japan are the same company. However, Atlas Japan ultimately have the say on what happens in regards to content that is made and put out on the internet for said games. Even though Atlas US gets told things by Atlas Japan, like, oh, it's perfectly okay for a streamer or a content creator to play our game up to this point as long as they don't involve this cutscene or they don't pass this certain point or they don't do this certain thing, it's fine. So they get told that, they share that with the world, but then Atlas Japan at any point, can just do whatever they want anyway. So, in particular, when we're talking about my playthrough of Persona 5, when the game was a new release, I played it, not even up to the point in the game where it was said publicly by Atlas US, you can't go past this point yet. I had not gotten to that point yet, and Atlas Japan hit my playthrough with copyright strikes. For seemingly no valid reason, and after talking directly with Atlas US, within about three weeks, they had the strikes removed, because they said, yeah... We don't know why Atlas Japan is doing this. They told us this to tell you. You didn't break the rules, so this is stupid. Okay? Now, when that happened, 
I talked directly to Atlas US and they said, we apologize, but there's actually, we don't control what Atlas Japan, the parent company does. They could very well hit you with more copyright strikes if you keep playing the game and we can't stop them. So I said, I can't play the game now. And I ended up waiting about a year to go back to Persona 5 to the point where like everyone under the sun had already finished the game. And I finally went back and was able to do the second half of the game and finish it. All right. Very frustrating. And, you know, just be, to be honest, in this day and age, if that happened, that could completely screw me over. Because when you get copyright strikes against your YouTube channel, you could lose your ability to stream. Which, obviously, I can't make a living without being able to stream. That would be a big issue. Okay? So, that being said, I can't take those risks. And, in particular, over the last couple of years, Atlas has come out with a couple of games where it seemed like their criteria to create content for those games was just ridiculously strict compared to other companies. I think one of the ones recently, wasn't it, um, wasn't it the Persona 5 Strikers game or something like that? Where they came out with these, like, ridiculously restrictive criteria to play the game. It was like, you can only do this, you can only do that, you gotta turn off cutscenes, you gotta do that. And everyone was reading these instructions and they're like, why is it that th that Atlas is so anal about these particular games in their, you know, like, what is it? No one else is like this. <laughs> Why on earth are they so particular about that? So I have always opted to not play their games. All right? It's just too much of a risk for me. Now, that doesn't mean that that won't change moving forward. It just means that right now I just don't get it. And most people don't get it. I think we're all in the same boat. Why is it that every other gaming company understands how this works in 2021 and Atlas still doesn't? So when you say, oh, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne uh, HD came out, there's two reasons why I'm not even considering it. The first is I'm too. I'm in the midst of too many RPGs as it is. I'm, still, I'm playing Divinity 2. I'm playing now Fallout New Vegas. You know, Mass Effect stuff. I can't just play 100 RPGs. It's just not going to work. As much as people like RPGs and there, there is an audience, I'm well aware there's an audience for me to play RPGs and people will support it, all right? But I can't just play a ton of RPGs at once. It just doesn't work. I have to do a variety of stuff. I'm a variety content creator and I can't keep taking up games that are 80 to 100 hour long games that I don't finish for months on end. It creates boredom. It creates stagnation. It creates a feeling like I'm not playing the games enough. Just look at Divinity 2 and the situation, the rut we're in with that game right now because of the kind of game it is. And I kind of expected that was going to happen. So I guarantee you, Shin Megami Tensei HD Nocturne, whatever the hell it's called, is probably an 80-hour game. and would probably take me six months to beat. And it's just not the kind of game that's going to fit in with my kind of stuff right now. Okay? So we'll see what happens moving forward. I would consider playing those games. I'm not writing them off. It's not that I'm not interested in them. But number one, it's always a risk with Atlas because you don't know if you can trust them. And number two, I'm just not looking for any lengthy RPGs right now. Okay? Fair enough? All right. Hope that answered the question. Albert Aponte has tipped me $4.20. Says, Phil, sorry that I missed the Call of Duty stream. Hope that you're good. I'm good. Uh, you missed some action. We did dual pistols again, for variety's sake. And I am trying to unlock a new pistol that was added to the game. And to do it, you need to do 20 matches where you get 5 pistol kills. And I was doing pretty damn good with the dual pistols. I got 9 matches last night in where I did that. So likely 1 to 2 more streams and I'll have a new gun unlocked for us to try on future sessions. So, that's good stuff. I'm excited for that. I hope you guys are too. More Call of Duty, you know, once a week at least coming up. And uh, trying to get the new weapon. So it went well. Thank you, Alfred, for the support. Okay. Alright, so guys. At this point, I've shouted out all of, your, of the contributions so far. Thank you to those who did contribute so far as well. Again, just to reiterate, having two completely slow days back-to-back -back has been bad. If you guys could please support today's stream with tips, I would greatly appreciate it, especially because it's New Vegas. I know you guys get hyped for New Vegas. Please support if you can today, all right? Um, any other last-minute questions? Any other things to ask or cover before we go on a brief break for me to use the restroom and then get started with New Vegas?
Not seeing anything. But so, yeah, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the bathroom here, and I recommend you guys grab a drink or a snack. Use the restroom yourselves. Hello, B Gaming. How are you today? Good to see you. And uh, it'll be fun. A good three plus hours of New Vegas coming up, man. <laughs> Am I going to be playing Outlast Trials? I don't know anything about it. What is that? Never heard of it. Is it a new Outlast game or something? It's been quite a while since we heard about Outlast. Okay. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a break. I'll be back in a few minutes. Again, take this opportunity, grab a drink or a snack yourselves, use the restroom, whatever you need to do. I'll be back with Fallout New Vegas in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, guys. See you in a bit. 